It's time to be creative in 3D and virtual reality, VR. It's time for Unity. In this video, we are gonna continue our journey on the Unity Learn Create with Code Player Control Unit 1. In the last video, we went over Lesson 1.1, Start Your Engines. In this video, we're going over Lesson 1.2, Pedal to the Metal. So let's click on that. In this lesson, you will make your driving simulator come alive. First, you will write your first lines of code in C Sharp, changing the vehicle's position and allowing it to move forward. Next, you will add playlist components to your objects, allowing them to collide with one another. Last, you will learn how to duplicate objects in the hierarchy and position them along the road. So I am going to click on, let's watch the introduction. We've positioned the vehicle at the start of the road with an obstacle directly in its path. The well, last I checked, this wasn't a parking simulator, it's a driving simulator. So we're going to give this vehicle a little gas. And by the end of this lesson, the vehicle will drive down the road crashing through the obstacles in its way. In Unity, all of the game objects in your scene are made up of components. And it's these components that determine how your game objects will look and behave in the scene. So if you want a game object to behave differently, you just need to change its components. Let's take our vehicle for example. Right now, it doesn't have a lot of components, it just sits there doing nothing. In fact, it doesn't even obey the laws of gravity. If you raised it up in the air, it would just float there like a vehicle-shaped cloud. But if you add a particular component that tells it to obey gravity, it'll fall. What we need, though, is a custom component that will make this vehicle drive down the road. So, we are going to create that component by programming it from scratch in a new c -sharp script. After we write the code that will move a game object forward, we'll apply that script component to our vehicle, and our vehicle will move forward. As you'll quickly find out, programming is very powerful. Just a single line of code will make that vehicle fly down the road. So to make all that happen, I'll see you in Unity. All right, so create and apply your first script. Again, you should watch the video and then do this. I'm just going to go straight to this. In the project window, in the project window, right click, create folder name scripts. So this is our project window down here. Right click, create folder. I'm gonna call it scripts. I'm actually gonna move that into assets. So here's my scripts folder. In the scripts folder, right click, create C sharp script named player controller. So I'm gonna just copy this. So inside of here, right click, create, and C sharp script is right here. Call it player controller. Drag the new script onto the vehicle object. So that is there. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag that on there. Click on the vehicle object to make sure it was added to the component in the inspector. So when I click on this, you can see right here, the player controller script, which is here, is added to that vehicle. Go ahead and I mark step as complete. Add a comment in the update method. So double click on the script to open it in Visual Studio. In the update method, add a comment that you will move the vehicle forward. All right, so this is our first thing in the script. I can simply double click on the script and this is Visual Studio. Here is our, I'm gonna close my console. Here is the basic script that starts anytime you make a script in Unity, this is the basic script that you have. You have the name, of your file, of your script. You have a start method and you have an update method. So what they want us to say is in here to make a comment is two slashes, move the vehicle forward. 
and you can see it looks exactly like that. Make sure you mark your step as complete. Give the vehicle forward motion. Now that we've had a comment saying that we will program, we will write a line of code that will actually move the vehicle forward. Under the new comment, type transform.tr, then select translate from the autocomplete menu. Type a space, let's just do the first, transform.tr. So coming over here, transform.tr, and then it says select this from the autocomplete menu. Come back, type a comment, a open parentheses and add 0, 0, 001 between the parentheses and complete the line with a semicolon. So we're going to come here, we're going to type that, and then we're doing 0 for the x, 0 for the y, and 1 for the z. So we're really moving 0, x, 0, y but one Z. Now the update method, as you can see, gets called once per frame. There's 60 frames per second. So 60 frames per second. So anything inside of here will get called 60 times every second. So if I'm saying transform.001, it's saying move it one unit every second. So it's gonna move 60 times in the Z direction. And just to show you, Z is blue. It's going this way, so it's gonna move this. So right now you can see this is at zero, zero, 001. This is one. And if I did two, three, this is in essence four. This is what it's going to do 60 times per second. So I'm just gonna put this back at zero. Let's come back to our steps. Press Control Save to save your script, then run your game to test it. So you can see I have that right here, transform.translate 0.0.1. Transform.tr, I'm not seeing translate, so I'm just gonna type it. Sometimes the auto doesn't work, and they want zero for the X, zero for the Y, and one for the Z. And make sure you put a semicolon at the end, so this is, move 0x, zero 0y, zero and 1z. Now, this function gets called once per frame. Well, there's 60 frames per second. So anything in here gets called 60 times per second. So let's come back. And it says press command save to save your script, then run the game. So here, I'm just gonna do file save all, and let's run it. What's gonna happen, it just starts at zero, but every second here, it's gonna move one, it's gonna go to two, then three, and four, then five, because we're only updating the Z. We didn't do anything to X or Y. So let's play. You can see, if you're looking down here, it's staying straight. And it's not falling because we didn't, we don't even have gravity. Let's do that one more time. So this is our scene. This is our actual game. Watch down here. So you're looking down here. And it even ran through the truck. So you see we have some stuff that we have to kind of fix. But come back here. Mark step here as complete. Use a vector three to move forward. We program the vehicle to move along the z-axis, but there's actually a cleaner way to code this. Delete the 001 you typed and use the autocomplete to replace it with vector3.forward. So we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna say vector3.forward. What does that mean? If you look at x and y, forward is always z. So this, Vector 3.forward is equal to 0, 0, 1, which is moving, moving forward. And you can see that's here. Go ahead and mark your step as complete. Let's save this and just make sure it still works because we have, we changed some code. So I press play and you can see it still works. Okay, customize the vehicle speed. Right now the speed of the vehicle is out of control. We need to change the code in order to adjust this. So you can see right here, add time.delta time and run your game. Add 
times 20 and run your game. So again, they want us to have this code times time that delta time. What does that do? Remember this runs 60 times per second, but time that delta time is equal to one second. So if I add time that delta time here, this is not going to run 60 times per second. It's going to run one time per second. So it's running. So here we're going to do dot time dot delta time. That's pretty much saying only run this every second. Now they also want us to times it by 20. So that's going to be the speed of the car. So times 20. So move the vehicle forward and do every second as a comment, which is time dot delta time at a speed of 20. That's what this line of code is doing. So let's save that and go ahead and mark step as complete. And again, we want to run your game again. So let's press play. We're looking down here. You can see it's slower. It still ran directly through that. It still keep going. And you can see it's just going, going, going. It's not falling off the road. So I want to pull this out so we can see this a little bit better. All right. Go ahead and mark your step as complete. Add a rigid body component to the object. Right now, the vehicle goes right through the box. If we want it to be more realistic, we need to add physics. Select the vehicle. Then in the hierarchy, click on Add Component and select Rigid Body. So click on my vehicle. Over here, I'm going to click on Add Component. And you can see the Rigid Body. You want to make sure you don't select 2D. This is a 3D object. You're going to select this. Come back. Select the obstacle, then in the hierarchy, click Add Component and Add Rigid Body. So I'm going to click on the obstacle, which is a rock. And that rock is way down on the ground. Make sure it's above the, it's not crashing into the road. But we need to do the same, click on Add, and I'm going to add a Rigid Body. In the rigid body component properties, increase the mass of the vehicle and the obstacle to be about what they would be in kilograms and test again. So for my vehicle, a tank, the mass is not one, the tank is about a thousand. And the rock, eh, let's say it's about five. And test it again. So let's press play. Again, we're looking down here. So you can see it hit the rock and it kind of flew. And you can look down here or up here. Let's just play, play. Boom. You can see it up there. Go ahead and press mark step as complete. Duplicate and position the obstacles. Last but not least, we should duplicate the obstacle and make sure the road is more treacherous for the vehicle. Click and drag on the obstacle on the bottom of the list in the hierarchy. So I'm going to drag this to the bottom of the list. Press Control or Command D to duplicate the obstacle and move it down the Z axis. Repeat this a few more times to create more obstacles. After making a few duplicates, select one in the hierarchy, hold Control, select multiple, then duplicate it. So what it wants us to do is right here, I'm going to do Command and D on my Mac. And that one, you can see there's two. I'm just going to do. 50. I'll do one more rock. So I'm going to select this command and D. Now I have that and I can just drag this down. Eh, well, we can say 70. That'll work. Then I can click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one, do command and D, or you can actually right click and then duplicate. But I'm just do the shortcut command and D. It copied three of those, right? So now I'm just going to move all of those like that. Now, I like that. There's rocks, but let's put some other stuff in. Let's just be, so we have course library, we have obstacles. I want to 
What am I going to drag in here? Uh, let's drag a crate. Sure. And let's drag a barrel. And I might drag another one. And I already have a boulder. So let's space these out some. This will be down here. And this will be here. Now, remember, I need to add rigid body to these. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to click on rigid body. That is five. So I'm going to leave that box at one. This is super small. I want to scale it up. I'm going to make this bigger. So I'm going to make it like that. Just drag it out a little bit. Make sure that I bring it up so it's above the road. I'm going to add my rigid body to it. And let's say this is two. And this, I'm just going to leave it one. So now I got a bunch of rocks. Then I have at the end, I added some other stuff. So duplicate that. Here's your lesson recap. Let's actually play it. You can see it is not hitting that guy right there. Huh. Let's see what's happening. That does not have a rigid body. So we have to select that. Now let's play it again. You can see this guy's coming. And it has gravity, so both of them fall. So rigid body, you can see here, actually adds gravity to these things. All right, that is lesson 1.2. Let's just play the lesson recap. So we've made it to the end of this little lesson. To wrap everything up, We've added some really good functionality to our game now, so when I press play, see the vehicle drives down the road, it doesn't move incredibly fast, it moves at a nice normal speed, it runs into all these boxes with physics, because the vehicle has physics, it just drives straight off the road, which is totally okay. Be free vehicle. We also learned a lot about coding in this lesson. We created our very first C-sharp script learned a little bit about the structure of how scripts and classes work. We learned about comments, even made a few of our own, learned about methods. We wrote our very first line of code and called our first method to be able to move the vehicle forward. So now we know how to use methods. We've learned a bit about parameters and how we can pass computer the information that we need to do something. We even cleaned up the way our speed is calculated a lot by making sure that our vehicle moves over time instead of once every frame. And we even learned about these cool little multiply operators. And then on our vehicles and on our obstacles, we added a rigid body component. We learned a little bit about our rigid bodies and our colliders. So now we can really create collisions for our vehicle and our obstacles. In the next lesson, We'll add some code to our camera so that we can actually follow along behind our vehicle as it drives away down the road. We'll see you there. So, again, mark your step as complete. And we'll move on to the next video.